What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Podcast, the show where we talk about news, games, and we sandwich a little fun in between. I'm your host, Timothy DeRoe, and joining me again this week is number one Nintendo fanboy, Michael Clear. What's That's up, true. Mike? Number one. Um, never number two. Nobody is nobody knows more about Nintendo than me. Um, some have called me the biggest Pikachu fan in the world. I don't know about it's, all that. I, you know, you couldn't guess. It up. Couldn't guess Pikachu last week. Reggie is actually my boyfriend. I got Reggie on post notice. You got Reggie on post notice. I do. Okay. Of course. Man. Okay. All right. Cool. A little bit of housekeeping for you before we get into the show. We're on YouTube now. If you prefer video or just want to show us some love, go subscribe. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel feed and drop us a like, please. That helps us a lot. If you're finding us on YouTube and prefer audio, you can find us on your favorite podcasting services and you can review and rate the show there um, and share us with your friends. All that jazz. Um, as uh, follow us on Twitter at Synced Up Pod to keep up to date with all of our episodes. If you have any questions you'd like us to discuss on the show, we have a reader mail section, and you can email us at SyncedUpPod at gmail dot com, and we might read it on the show. All new episodes go up on YouTube and all the podcasting services at seven a.m. Central Time Zone. Game. That's true. That's true. Um, so let's just get straight into the news this week. Big week. Yep. So DC Fandom was uh, yesterday on Saturday. We record this on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of news that came out of it. A lot of uh, a movie lot of gaming news, news, gaming news, news, all kinds of DC news, a lot of mm -hmm. good stuff. But for the gaming news, we're going to go over it right now. Gotham Knights uh, was announced, the new um, Warner Brothers Montreal game. Yep. Kind of exciting. I'm really Looks excited about exciting. this. Yes. So this is straight from the Gotham Knights website. Batman is dead. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, I guess that's kind of a spoiler. <laughs> a new expansive criminal underworld has swept the streets of Gotham City. It is now up to the Batman family, Batgirl, Nightwing, Red Hood, and Robin to protect Gotham, bring hope, hope to its citizens, discipline to its cops, and fear to its criminals. From solving mysteries that connect the darkest chapters in the city's history to defeating notorious villains and epic confrontations, you must evolve into the new Dark Knight and save the streets from, de uh, from, from descent into chaos. Gotham Knights is an open-world action RPG set in the most dynamic and interactive Gotham City yet. In either solo play or with one other hero, patrol Gotham's five distinct boroughs and drop in on criminal activity wherever you find it. Your legacy begins now. Step into the night. Um, so, yeah, this is super exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. We got to see over the weekend. They announced it with a trailer, and then they showed off a um, seven-and-a-half-ish minutes of... Just straight up gameplay, like which you don't get most times. No, you know, just straight up like E three style gameplay. So, from what I've seen of this game so far, I'm super excited. So it's confirmed that you can play you play co op. It's not four player. There is four playable characters, but you yeah. can only play two player co op. Which I think is an interesting choice. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. But it looks to have that same rock steady style from Arkham Asylum, Arkham City, Arkham Knight, like yeah. all those classic stuffs you remember of of, of sneaking and. Um, like the the su supreme level of combat that those games have, mm -hmm. the flashy combat. Yeah, yeah, it looks like this game has it. From what they showed, it was a little bit clunky, but it doesn't drop till next year. So mm -hmm. they were saying like, hey, this isn't final. There's, there's more time. Of, yeah, there's a little bit of stuff there. But who you, who are you maining? Uh, Batgirl till I die. Really, Batgirl See. till I die. And Chance uh, is Nightwing. So me and Chance. See, I, I think I'm on the the Nightwing train yeah. as well. Either Nightwing or Red Hood. Yeah. So me and Chance are gonna play through the game. I'm gonna play as Batgirl. He's gonna play as Nightwing. I'm super mm -hmm. excited to do that. Just being able to play those games multiplayer is not a thing that you knew you wanted i feel like yeah i think it, i think it's gonna be very exciting to yeah. be able to share that memory with 100 percent. so get us into this next story here uh, yeah so this is also DC announced the DC, dc fandom rocksteady's new suicide squad game is all about killing superman with a baseball bat and some boomerangs this is from chris Nottis at engadget uh we finally got more details on rocksteady's upcoming suicide squad title after it was teased earlier this month uh, the game will highlight a smaller roster of Harley Quinn, Deadshot, King Shark, and Captain Boomerang. King and Shark and Captain Boomerang. Those are interesting choices. They also. are. I, I feel like they had to pick Car Harley Quinn and Deadshot because those, those are your mainstays yeah. and like, your big pulls. Um, the teaser shows them beating up minions in a city under siege from what appears to be the evil supercomputer Brainiac. Uh, but things quickly take a turn when they run into Superman holding a pilot in one hand who he promptly fries with his heat vision. Um, Unlike Superman to do something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The trailer showed them very excited that Superman was here. And, yeah. uh, and very, he, then he killed a man. Yeah. Interesting tone on King Shark. Seems to be the comedic relief a little very, bit. Yeah. I think when we watched it, I, I said it was a very Guardians of the Galaxy-esque yeah. kind of feel where King Shark is like Drax, you know, kind yeah. of a lovable idiot vibe going on. And Captain Boomerang also seems to be kind of that level of like, 
we're just gonna josh around because he, yeah he's australian he has a super hard accent he's like he's always quipping so yeah suicide squad killed the justice league is a continuation of the universe of rocksteady's previous trilogy of batman games arkham asylum arkham city and arkham knight but a larger cast of playable characters means more powers and abilities to toy with Harley Quinn's baseball bat, Deadshot's jetpack, and Captain Boomerang's boomerangs all bring different <laughs> gameplay mechanics that create new and interesting ways to take on the game's various challenges. The title will also have multiplayer, with each gamer taking on a different member of the four-person team. Very exciting. Yeah, 100%. Um, more catch co-op games, are, I think, are needed more than ever. I know, me and Jordan have been fiending. I know. We've been playing so many. We're playing Divinity right now, which we'll talk about at the end of the episode. But mm -hmm. we, we've been fiending for couch co-op games. Um, unfortunately, anyone looking to join forces with their friends to take down Superman and the rest of the Justice League will have to wait until 2022 for the game's release. I think this is very exciting. Mm -hmm. I, I was honestly a little shocked that, you know, Rocksteady took on Suicide Squad and Warner Brothers took on Gotham Knights. Yeah, because you would expect Gotham Knights to really be the the, the, the sequel to yeah. the other ones. And it, it I guess that's not what it is because it seems... Because in, if you look and you look at the screenshots and the gameplay online of the um, Gotham Knights stuff, yeah. the world, like it's... It feels they're like calling it Arkham Gotham, game. but it it looks like Arkham, you know? Like yeah. It, they have like the... the what are those little things? Gargoyle things mm -hmm. that you jump on. Like they have all the stuff. I so. wonder if they took a lot of the assets from... Um, Rocksteady and they collabed a little bit, you know, mm -hmm. and helping them make it. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked. They're under like the same happened. umbrella. So this is exciting stuff. That's not all the news that came out of DC fandom this week. If you're into other nerd dome type type Snyder stuff, cut, baby yeah. Snyder cut four hours of justice league, which yeah. I'm not going to be watching Rest in peace one evening. Yeah. I'm not going to be watching that, but if you're into that, you can watch that. Um, uh, the suicide squad movie got teased. Mm -hmm. John Cena's in it. They showed Black Adam with The Rock. I'm yeah. kind of excited about that. If you're into any of that stuff, you can check out the DC Fandom stuff on Twitter, mm -hmm. on their websites and all that jazz. A lot, lot of big stuff. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, do you, don't forget the Batman trailer. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the uh, uh, Robert Pattinson's. Yeah. That thing looks kind of sick. Of I'm Batman. not going to lie. I'm very interested to see yeah. where they go with it. With the Riddler. Yes. It's kind of cool. Um, but to stay on the more video game type side of announcements, we got a Nintendo indie world event yeah. uh, that happened this week let's go ahead and run us so through this. nintendo showcased nearly two dozen upcoming indie games um during its august indie world stream and here's everything we saw during the presentation this was uh accumulated by kevin nizivik we'll at GameSpot. We'll uh, the first game they showed was hades a game i've uh talked about really wanting to play before uh so this is from super giant the game is a roguelike action rpg uh, and Hades has been available in early access on PC since December 2018, but it's officially making its console debut this year when it comes to Nintendo Switch in fall 2020. This is a good get, in my opinion. Yeah, I think so too. Super um, Giant has a lot of rapport with me and with the community mm -hmm. as a whole. I love Transistor. I love Bastion. Bastion. Yeah. I didn't like Pyre as much, but I'm not really into like the sports they, aspect. They tend to ignore that one a little bit when they're yeah. talking about their games. People love Pyre though. I yeah, mean, but, but it's like, it's from the, you know, anytime you hear about Hades, from the creators of Bastion and Transistor. Yeah. You know? Good games. Um, so I'm excited. I hope to play this soon. Mm -hmm. I've watched a lot of gameplay of it. It, it looks very looks fun. I like the aesthetic. I like the, you know, roguelike part of it. Exciting. Um, after that, they showed Hypospa Hypnospace Outlaw. Mm -hmm. um, described, as, described as a 90s internet simulator, Hypnospace Outlaw places players in the roles of the Hypnospace Police Department Enforcer, which involves browsing old 90s AOL-style websites to find clues and track down virtual villains. Uh, this game launches on the Switch on August 27th. Um, this one looked interesting. It did. It, uh, it, it looked super, what do you call that? Uh, where a game like has captures like a, like, like an aesthetic. It has like a very specific yeah, aesthetic. Yeah, extremely 100%. specific to the nineties internet thing. hundred oh, percent. You're, you're playing in browser the whole time. Mm -hmm. Um, it looked cool though. Yeah. It might work well on the switch if they got touch controls. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not too, you know, oh, I got to play that one, but if. Somebody else picked it up. I'd probably watch it. Mm -hmm. um, after that, Spirit Fairer. Mm -hmm. um, as the Spirit Fairer, Stella, you need to befriend spirits of the recently departed and help them cross over into the afterlife in your fairy. Yeah. So Spirit Fairer actually was one of those games that got announced for um, like the dropping today section because yeah. they had a lot of those games on the Nintendo Direct of of hey these are coming out right now and i bought three of them i bought manifold garden i bought spirit fair and i bought a short hike a short hike mm -hmm. um so i played a lot of spirit fair normally we keep this stuff to the end of the podcast but i feel like sprinkling it in is a, is a little better in my opinion mm -hmm. so um there, he's playing the trailer right now so if you're watching on youtube you can see you can kind of see how things go this is also on game pass right it is on game pass on xbox if you want to if you want to play it there i bought it on switch for 30 bucks 
Um, glad I bought it on Switch. I like the mobile aspect of it. Mm -hmm. um, might still download it on Game Pass just to get the achievements. But this, man, this game is awesome. Yeah. Like, I absolutely love this game. I can't stop playing it. It is beautiful. has a beautiful art style. It has a beautiful soundtrack. The whole, the whole like, thing the game is trying to portray is, like, mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. Because the way they describe it on their website is it's a cozy game about death. Yeah. And that's pretty much what it is. You play as this character who is the, quote, spirit fairer who gets these other people who are really animals, right? They turn mm -hmm. into spirit animals. And you... You help them on their final days of their life through their journey, and then yeah. you, you take them to this ever door, and then they pass on to the afterlife. Is the, is the game good because it's very good at pulling on your heartstrings, or is it good because of just that? The, and also, the gameplay is very the, well made. The gameplay is really good. The okay. animations are very fluid. Um, the platforming stuff like that, it all works really well. Mm -hmm. It is extremely like just crisp and stuff in the way the game controls. I do have a couple of qualms with some of the button like control choices of like why getting out of a menu is Y, which is technically like X or whatever. Yeah. Like, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. But other than that... That's like, happened in other games. Yeah, it's um, it's super good. And if you are into like something that captures that Animal Crossing, like like that aura of like, hey, you're checking, you're planting crops, you're checking on your people every day. Yeah. You're like, hu you, you can hug them. And I love those hugs, man. <laughs> you always got to get those hugs in. You can cook food, learn recipes. Yeah. You, you get a sawmill, you get a forge, you do all these mini games to get like all kinds of different of minerals and stuff that you need to craft to upgrade your boat to build their stuff like if you if you're on the screen now you can see the boat there you, mm. you can place their houses around and you can place the buildings around and it's kind of like a management um, game in that aspect and then yeah. you also can just fish or cook or plant and just do peaceful stuff so okay if you're into that type of game i would highly advise to uh cop spirit fair it's very good how many, how many hours do you think you'll be able to get out of that game i'm not sure because i'm i'm like 10 to 15 hours in mm -hmm. And I think I still got a ways to go. So okay. for 30 bucks or just on Game Pass, worth the cop. Worth the cop. Right. But anyway, on let's the move next on thing. here. Um, Garden Story was also announced. It's a top-down, wholesome action adventure game in which you take control of a grape named Concord and need to help rebuild your community. To do that, you'll need to explore the world and gather resources with which to restore buildings and improve the town. Garden Story releases on Switch in 2021. This was a game we played at PAX. You played this one at PAX? Yes, I played this game at PAX. Me and okay. Chance both played this at PAX. I missed it, this one then. Yep. Um, it was one of those ones in the like indie area where they have like oh, the just a bunch booths. of screens. Yeah. yeah. Okay. It was right in there. This looked very um, Stardew Valley. -esque. Yeah. Do you, it wasn't, especially with the community feature yeah. and you know, it, if you, I don't know if I'll consider it that, like I would say it captures that aura, but it seems more like a linear Metroidvania style. Yeah. Game. Yeah. So, I, but aesthetically it's like, oh yeah. 100%. I felt like I was looking at a, a DLC or something for yeah. Stardew. Except you play as a great Mm. So, <laughs> I mean, yeah. cool. you got to have your strange. It's a cool little game. Somewhere. Chance is excited for it. I know that much. Yeah. So. Um, still a whole year, though. Mm -hmm. uh, after that, they showed Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero. Um, the underwater exploration game Subnautica and its Arctic follow-up are both coming to Nintendo Switch next year. In each game, you'll need to explore the uncharted waters of an alien world and collect resources, craft structures, and avoid hostile life forms as you unravel the mysteries of the planet you crash landed on. This is interesting. The, yeah. Honestly, um, as someone who's played through a ton of Subnautica... And played a little bit of Below Zero. I don't know if these games are going to run well on Switch. I mean, they'll run. <laughs> that's, <laughs> they really run the, well? that's really the but target. Hey, hey, they brought Witcher 3 over. And my yeah. friend Ben put like 30 hours in it on Switch. Yeah, I was shocked on how many people I've talked to who are like casual Switch players. Mm -hmm. Who have who got Witcher on the Switch and just sunk like 100 hours. In exactly. It doesn't make any sense. Like people so, I didn't even know played video games. Who yeah. were just like, yeah, I maybe play, I play Witcher on Switch. Maybe it'll run well. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Uh, we'll see. Um... Next after that, uh, Takeshi and Hiroshi, another title surprise launching on Switch today. Takeshi and Hiroshi is a game about aspiring game designer, designer Takeshi who is building a side-scrolling action RPG for his younger, bro younger brother Hiroshi to play. Your goal is to make a game that Hiroshi will really enjoy, but you'll need to make sure it isn't too challenging or you won't be able to beat it. Mm -hmm. Did this looked very interesting. Oh yeah, the art style, dude. The yeah. claymation style. There, there was a... Two, it looked like there was two aspects of the game. Mm -hmm. You're in the real world where you're talking to your brother and your yep. family or whatever, and it's like a yeah, very clay. It wasn't look like it wasn't stop motion, but it was like the yeah, clay models. Yeah, almost. you. It looks stop motion. It's animated 100, percent but yeah, it the the art style is very stop motion. And then on the other hand, you have the aspect of when you're in game, and I guess mm -hmm. you're probably playing as Hiroshi at that point, um, where you're playing the game you built. Well, no, you're tweaking the game you built as, as Hiroshi he, plays oh, it. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this game actually launched so on Apple, Apple Arcade. 
Okay. So it's been on Apple Arcade for a while. No one talked about it. Apparently, it's pretty good. Mm-hmm. I guess that might be a sign of the times of, of no one hearing about this game really on Apple yeah. Arcade. But it dropped on Apple Arcade, coming to Switch now. I'm very interested. Looks cute. I might cop it. I just bought Inmost, so I got to play Inmost. Okay. This is one of those ones I might buy. I'm considering getting Raji as well this next game. There's yeah. A, there's uh, a couple I've of games I've heard a lot of here. good things about Raji. Me as well. Um, me as an well. ancient epic. A beautiful action adventure game set in ancient India. Raji, an ancient epic, cast players in the role of a young girl who must battle the demonic forces invading the world and rescue her younger brother. Yep. This is one um, of those like foreign game company games yeah. where you love to see like these other foreign countries who normally doesn't have these breakout hits. Mm-hmm. You see like a little indie team and you're just like, oh, that's cool. That's probably my favorite part of lot, yeah. watching these uh, the, the indie world um, showcase or uh, like PC Gamer Showcase started doing stuff like that too where mm-hmm. they're inviting specifically... Um, developers from outside of the U.S. and the U.K. Mm-hmm. and branching out more and getting these titles like this. Yeah. Looked fun. Yeah, it does, uh, it does look pretty like good. Looks like a good story, too. Uh, after that, they showcased Bear and Breakfast. It's a charming management game in which you play as Hank, a bear who is trying to turn a dilap- dilapidated shack into a bed and breakfast. That's a long word. Dilapidated? Dilapidated? <laughs> dilapidated? <laughs> dilapidated. <laughs> dilapidated. <laughs> to do so, you'll need to customize its room, increase your rep, and explore the forest to uncover some big secrets. Baron Breakfast launches for Switch as a timed console exclusive in 2021. Mm-hmm. Timed console console exclusive was the first time um, that I'd ever heard that phrase. Really? Timed console exclusive. You've never heard that? Yeah, I guess I had, but like they said it so much that I'm like, oh, why does this feel like the first time I'm hearing this phrase? No, no, dude, I heard that all the time, especially especially the past couple E3s. They say yeah. that shit all the time. Um, this is one of those that Trey's looking forward to. I think it's pretty good. Trey Why? was saying he was, I don't know. He said he really wanted to pick it up and play it. No, I'm not trying to insult the game or anything. It's <laughs> yeah. just like that. Out of all these games, that was an interesting one. Yeah. And uh, I might look into it. I might look into it. I just love indie games, man. It's an indie yeah. type of season. I've been I've been cranking them out, it's, as you'll hear at the I end mean, of the August show. is an indie month. Like, it just yeah. has that vibe. 100%. No um, straight roads is yeah, like a day we've been We've been waiting for that one. I'm uh-huh. excited for that. Um, after that, they showed a short hike. Uh, you play as Claire, a teen bird who is camping at Hawk Peak Provincial Park. While awaiting an important phone call, Claire sets off for the mountain summit to get better reception, meeting and aiding a motley cast of animals along the way. So this game, we're going to talk about it here because we both played this game. Yes. It's roughly an hour to two hours, depending on how much you explore. Mm-hmm. There's a lot to do, surprisingly, on this tiny ass island. Yeah. It, once you get to the top and fly to the bottom, you're like... Maybe it's there's, not such a tiny yeah, ass island. There's stuff that I did that you didn't do, and there's stuff you did that I didn't mm-hmm. do. Like, you never played beach, beach stick ball, did you? No, I did. I never you got did? the boat, though. Oh, you never got the so boat. So it's like... Okay. Yeah. So anyway, a short hike is a game where you play as a bird in this uh, world of anthropomorphic animals with this very interesting art style that I liked mm-hmm. a lot. I dug it. Um, and you're just... It's exactly what it is. A short hike. You're yeah. climbing a mountain. Not even really climbing. Um flying doing all kinds of different things like you can get a bucket that lets you grow some plants that mm-hmm. give you a boost um you can do all kinds of different stuff in the game whether that's like like there's a lady who needs you to get her camping permit and you got to go yeah. find it or there's um there's a guy who wants you to collect 15 shells so he can make a necklace for some lady that you got to yeah. deliver it to there's just a lot of little things you can do in the very, game yeah very but, cute very yeah a very fun mm-hmm. short hike <laughs> like an hour and a half in once i finished it i was just like that was mm. pleasant yeah that was fun and for seven bucks on sale right now on nintendo switch pretty damn good very enjoyable me. pretty damn uh, good that probably gets the stamp of the approval for the week 100 percent. um after that they showed card shark developed by the studio behind reigns king and queens card shark is a game all about cheating at cards you'll need to master real card tricks and manipulations to move your way up 18th century french society but you'll need to be careful not to get caught as the results could prove deadly um, Card Shark is releasing on Nintendo Switch in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, my thoughts on this game was it looked like a lot of quick time events. Yep, is what I assumed it would be. I don't know how much there might be, you know, dialogue yeah. options and stuff like that. But it looked like the majority of the game was just quick time events and trying to pull off these card tricks. Or whatever. Yeah, this is another one of those ones Trey was looking forward to, mm-hmm. and I honestly was kind of a little bit iffy on it until I found out it was by the Reigns guys, and then yeah. that kind of piques my interest a little bit. I played mm-hmm. Reigns Kings and Queens um, on the iPhone. Probably I would. I just want to see. Half ago. Yeah, I want to see more of this game before yeah. I decide anything about it. Because yeah, I, I just I have a lot of questions. Like, is it just what's what's the real gameplay? Yeah, what's yeah. the meat of it? Um, after that, Torchlight Three, uh, following its early access launch earlier this year, the loot-driven dungeon crawler Torchlight Three is coming to Nintendo Switch this fall. That's a good get. Yep. As someone who didn't like Torchlight Two, 
I'm not gonna play Torchlight Three. Yep. But I mean, hey, if you're into the Torchlight series and you want to play that shit on Switch, there's Jordan over there giving the hand signs. He mm-hmm. loved Torchlight Two. It's a good get for yeah, Nintendo. A so. pretty big get. Mm-hmm. Um, after that, Manifold Garden. Uh, this title challenges you to navigate a strange MC Escher. Mm-hmm. MC Escher. Es- yeah, MC Escher inspired world, and you'll need to manipulate gravity to change your perspective and ascend the impossible structures that stretch before you. So I have bought this game, have not played it yet, so you'll mm-hmm. have my thoughts on it next week. But it does yeah. look really good. Puzzle it's, game. Yeah, it it takes on the idea of impossibly designed architecture, and you have to navigate your way Which through those. Which I things. love. Yeah, very interesting. I'm. I can't. I'm excited to hear what you think about that game, mm-hmm. so I can consider getting into it. Yeah. After that, uh, Evergate. Evergate is a 2D side-scrolling adventure game, um, reminiscent of Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Very. Yeah, extremely. 100. percent As key, you'll 100%. need to make use of your unique soul flame ability to slow down time and navigate the dreamlike world of the afterlife. Yeah. So they were, they had some aspects in there to differentiate it, but it's the very soul flame. Much... It seemed like they they pushed the soul flame thing very hard, so because it they wouldn't knew. be Ori. Yeah. So um, it's very Ori. And Ori's not on the Switch, so mm-hmm. hey, if you want to play an Ori game, just get this, I, I guess. Yep, and Ori's very good. It looks good. It looks very interesting too. The way you use the Soul Flame yeah. mechanic. Kyle uh, Hilliard, I think his last name's Hilliard, mm-hmm. from the Min Max podcast, uh, played it, and he very much enjoys it. He said it's very good. So okay, and then after that, they went to the Sizzle Reel. Well, they uh, you know speed round shot off a bunch of games. Havens coming in twenty twenty, going that. under in September twenty fourth. The Red Lantern Fall twenty twenty. Unrailed September 23rd. That's we a good idea. I'm going to be excited to get that. I might have I think, to get, if it, we play it on Switch, I think we might play it more. Yeah. Uh, that game is very fun when we play very it. Very fun with friends. One um, of those overcooked style games of like just chaos with your buddies. Yeah, it's and so it just good. slowly picks up faster so and faster. Good. After that, struggling August 27th. In most August 21st. Which I copped. We'll yeah. She Dreams Elsewhere week. was early 2021. Grindstone is fall. Grindstone is fall. I thought that was super interesting that Grindstone is actually coming to yeah. Switch because it's one of those Apple Arcade games. Never expected it to go anywhere other than Apple Arcade. Mm-hmm. For it to come to Switch is kind of like an interesting thing. Mm-hmm. It is a very good game though. So if you're into Wait, that, are you gonna play it again? Or? Uh, no, I, won't, I don't think I'll play it again. But it is a very good one of those like match games where you're mm-hmm. like matching three and doing stuff like that. Yeah, um, love it. Uh, and then is it Goner or Goner? It's Goner. Okay, Goner two, uh, fall twenty twenty, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, they had a nice little moment at the end where they were talking about Goose Game. Getting a multiplayer update. Yep. It's something um, I did not expect. Yeah, a very free update, too. Very free. Extremely very free. free. <laughs> like, almost exactly $0. Yeah. It free, might be $0. As free can be. Um, so that'll be fun. I mm-hmm. know Trace probably excited for that. Yeah. Um, Goose Game's a game I have installed on my Xbox. But I just... I come you should so just close. Out, bro. I got so close to Actually, just it. wait till it gets multiplayer, and then I'll play it with you. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah, we might have to do that. Um, and then there's also a physical release coming of Goose Game mm-hmm. with a, I believe, what, a, like a recyclable something. Yeah, it's like which a is, 100% recycled like box. So like the box is like made out of paper, but it, it's, yeah, it's really pretty good. cool. So that's pretty cool. That was pretty it. That 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 was pretty it. <laughs> that, that's pretty it, man. <laughs> Listen, okay. man, I've been talking for a while. Yeah. So that's the entirety of the Nintendo Indie World Showcase. All in very all, very good, very good, extremely yeah. good showcase. And this I think is their indie showcases are probably. Where Top. they shine the best. Yeah. This is accented by the rumors of a Nintendo Direct happening next week. Yeah. Well, and, you know, the last two Indie Worlds they did the week after, they had a Nintendo Direct, is all I'm saying. And there's strong rumors. So maybe the gaming gods will bless us next week. I don't want to get too hyped up because I my hype is as it's high as a roller can coaster be this year waiting for Nintendo. a Direct. Yeah. Yeah. And so, I mean, what are they going to show? Mario 35th anniversary. And then what? Pikmin three again? <laughs> Zelda thirty fifth anniversary? Because if they everything they've held off on, it's just going to be huge. Metroid Prime four. It would be like three. You, you got to tell me this direct would have to be like the biggest direct. Yeah, right? but one hundred percent. Because they got to show off a Smash character too. So oh it, my! I forgot about that. Yeah. So oh, it's shit. Okay, that's It'd be a, a huge direct. I don't want to get too excited. I'm yep. already getting excited. To hold you off for those family oriented uh, Nintendo games. Uh, there was an announcement for a not family oriented game whatsoever if you want to play this instead um, it depends on your family Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is official it will be inspired by actual events they'll reveal the game for real on August 26th so we'll have we'll be able to talk about that next week mm-hmm. this is by Sean Hollister at The Verge according to snippets of text that flashed during the teaser video players may play or interact with an alleged Soviet spy codenamed Perseus whose goal was to subvert the US 
to ensure Soviet dominance in the arms race. The real-life CIA has at least one article about a Perseus as well, who was supposedly among the spies who was supposedly among the spies that stole the U.S. nuclear secrets from the Manhattan Project at Los Alamos. That part would have been, happened during World War II, though. Mm -hmm. So, actually, if you want to roll, Jordan, if you want to roll the, the teaser trailer that they had for this, um, I think this is a very interesting thing. So, me and you can't hear it, but the people should be able to hear it. Can yeah. they hear it? Okay. So, yeah. This teaser is weird. Like, even though, you, have you seen it? I don't think I've seen this one. Okay, so even though you can't hear it, there's like an interview going on in the background. Mm. This is so interesting to me to use all this real-world footage yeah. for a teaser for a video game. Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell? So for, for any audio listeners, it's real-life footage from history. I yeah. believe it's real life. I mean, it, if it ain't, this it is It looks like crazy. it's from a variety of stuff, too. Yeah. Um, Not just like Cold War yeah. footage. It's this interview with this Russian guy where he's talking about how Russia is going to inseminate the U.S. by causing a crisis and messing with their elections and all of this stuff. Such a weird choice to do this, in my opinion. Especially mm -hmm. when they timed it with the Senate Russians, like the Senate talking about possible Russian stuff with the election this year yeah. and, and in 2016, which we don't have to get into, obviously, because this is not that type of podcast. But to time it on that exact day and for all this stuff. And for Call of Duty to notoriously have this we're not political stance. Yeah. It's like, bro, are you kidding me? And you know, yeah. the, you know what they, I think they have it in here. Yeah, here we go. I'll continue on with the rest of the article before we get real into it. The game will be formally unveiled on August 26th. Until then, there isn't much more to share, except perhaps the game's tagline, know your history or be doomed to repeat it. And that's its YouTube description and that its YouTube description mentions the name for Dansk, which is also just so happens to be the location of Warzone's primary map and was also featured in Modern Warfare. The teaser release was timed with members of the Call of Duty community completing a multi-day alternate reality game that involved in various forms of Cold War style code breaking, which led them to secret rooms inside the Verdansk map in Call of Duty Warzone, which seemed to imply there would also be a connection between Cold War and Warzone. The ARG also included a variety of videotapes, each corresponding to a year in Cold War history, with similar similar clips to the ones in this teaser. Hmm. So yeah, first and foremost, I like Treyarch a lot. I'm very excited to play the next Call of Duty. Yeah, the uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, this new one. I think the campaign was one of the best I've played up to this point. I like the campaigns. I like the multiplayer, but man, I don't know if I can get behind this weird, like strat they're going with this real life footage. They and just stuff. didn't have in-game footage ready, man. The date came. You could have done something. The boss said, "Listen, I need something." So he said, "We have no in-game footage." He so said, we're gonna just use the real stuff. <laughs> use the real thing. Yeah, it's honestly an interesting choice to go yeah. with this on style marketing, especially when their marketing is notoriously not political in big ass air quotes. So, do you think Warzone is just going to carry over yes. into Cold War? A hundred percent. I think it's going to ride. Now, now, do you think people who are playing Call of Duty? Black Ops Cold War Warzone are going to be able to play the same Warzone. I think it will be the same Warzone. I think okay. Warzone will come attached because it's a free to play. It's they're you yeah. know they're talking about how they're because how do you make it, it different? Yeah, I don't. Or is it just a big update for everybody? I don't. Yeah, I think I don't think you want to split that uh, player base. I think player base. yeah, I, I think, think you, that's where I'm going to be. I think interested. it's Warzone Season Five launches with Black Ops Cold War. Yeah. I don't know what the seasons are on right now. And but maybe you make everything if you get Cold War, you get all the aesthetics. Aesthetic yeah, stuff. all the aesthetics yep. change and stuff. So yeah. get excited for the new Call of Duty if you want. I'm if a little want. if you want. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. If I'm not you don't encourage want, you. you don't do it if you don't want to, I guess. Um but there, the thing I'm more excited about on the multiplayer side of things, Ghost mm -hmm. of Tsushima Legends coming to PS4 more fall multiplayer. 2020. This is from the PlayStation blog. Today I am very excited to reveal Ghost of Tsushima Legends, a new online cooperative multiplayer mode that will come as a free download for Ghost of Tsushima owners on PS4 later this year. Legends is an entirely new experience. It's a separate mode that doesn't follow Jin or the companions from his journey, but instead focuses on four warriors who have been built up as legends and stories told by the people of Tsushima. Ghost of Tsushima's single player campaign focuses on an open world and exploring the natural beauty of the island. But Legends is haunting and fantastical, with locations and enemies inspired by Japanese folktales and mythology and an emphasis on cooperative combat and action. Exciting. We design Legends to be an exclusively cooperative gameplay experience. You'll be able to partner up with friends or via online matchmaking and play Legends in groups of two to four players. Each player can choose from one of four different character classes, the Samurai, Hunter, Ronin, or Assassin. Each class has unique advantages and abilities that we'll review, reveal in the future. 
With two players in Ghost of Tsushima Legends, you'll be able to play a, a series of co-op story missions that escalate in difficulty, building on the foundation of combat from the single-player campaign, but with new magical twists that often require careful synchronization with your partner. With four players, you'll be able to take on a wave-based survival mode, fighting groups of the toughest enemies Tsushima has to offer, including new Oni enemies with supernatural abilities. If you can best story and survival missions, you may be confident enough to take on the four-player raid that will arrive shortly after the launch of Ghost of Tsushima Legends, sending you and your partners to an entirely new realm to challenge a brutal, terrifying enemy. So when this was announced, first thing I said was, fucking wow. Yeah. I was like, this was completely that, I think that was field. a huge shock for a yeah. game like this to develop a multiplayer. Super unexpected. Out of nowhere. Yeah, super out of left field. I would mm -hmm. have expected some uh, single-player DLC, but free multiplayer update what An the another fuck? extremely free update you know yeah less than a dollar as free as free can get um i think the fun. raid feature sounds very cool yeah as not something who... i'd expect even when you told me multiplayer yeah that there'd raid. be a raid feature yeah raids um, where it takes you into a entirely new universe realm yeah and gets you out of there super wild stuff i'm excited for this as someone who loved ghost of tsushima very much mm -hmm. loved it and the combat is really good i'm gonna play through this with the um, with the uh, trey yeah so this is this is stuff to get exciting about, you know, mm -hmm. sh showing support for games continuously over a course of period of, or over a period of time is always yeah. good. Um, usually doesn't happen for single player games yeah. though. You good on get, Sucker Punch. Yeah, you might get a couple DLCs, but I'm super into this. Like it's something I didn't know I wanted. Yeah, I like, think it'll be exciting for you and Trey to to dive into this. Yeah, 100. percent Until then, um, you can not play Fortnite on your iPhone. Apple threatens to close Epic Games developer account on August 28th. This is by Amber Neely at Apple Insider. Hey, you know, you reach and you don't find anything. That was, no, I thought it was great. You reach. <laughs> Until then, you could just and you're found not wanting. play Fortnite. Yeah, okay. Apple's letter to Epic leads with, Upon further review of the activity associated with your Apple de developer program membership, we have identified several violations of the Apple... 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 Apper. Apper. Developer Program License Agreement. Therefore, your Apple Developer Program account will be terminated if the violations set forth below are not cured within 14 days. As part of the removal, Apple is stripping Epic of ac access to software development tools, effectively neutering the company's Unreal Engine with its hundreds of iOS and Mac apps. Epic and its filing claims the software, which is licensed to third-party developers, did not viol violate Apple policy. Apple is attacking Epic's entire business within unrelated areas, Epic said in its lawsuit. Hmm. So this is just a um, continuation of the story that we talked about last week. Apple yeah. and Epic continued going, you know, continuing to throw blows at each other. Apple completely locking them out, mm -hmm. removing their app, and then completely locking out Unreal Engine is massive. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. That's a, a lot, lot of, of a lot of developers who I bet who already spent time, you know, developing a game for iOS or something. Yep. in Unreal Engine, it hurts a yep. lot of people besides just Epic. This um, is. You collateral would, damage to the highest degree there um microsoft even put out a statement phil spencer put out a statement supporting epic. supporting epic so mm -hmm. this is going to be a very interesting legal battle to yeah. watch and, and see how it plays out most likely going to take longer than we expect oh yeah you know legal battles take six months and, i mean do you expect other two years other businesses to step in you think yeah. sony would say something mm, no i don't think sony's going to say anything but i do think other... say nintendo is not going to say oh nintendo's anything. not going to say shit they don't give a damn but I Pokemon think Ghost Sony's coming. not going to, but I think there will be some other companies who join the fray that are yeah. like, hey, you know, we're going to fight for this. And honestly, you can't take away from the fact that at the end of this, Epic's going to make more money. Okay. Ultimately, yeah. that's one of the biggest plays here. It's a chess move. Yeah. It's a couple of very specific chess moves and a very specific chess game between corporate greed guy number one and corporate greed guy number two. Mm -hmm. But you can't argue ultimately at the end of the day, this is going to, if Epic can win. This will help developers. Yeah, um, it, it, and I people. Mean, it will help us. It'll either help way us. you look, a big company is going to win. But I think more little companies, more small guys, are going to win if Epic wins. Yeah, if so, Epic wins this legal battle, you know we could save some money on our consumer end. They can mm -hmm. save some money on their developer end. It's good for everyone, but it's also really good for Epic. So you can't yeah. take that out of the equation because I don't want to sit here and act like they're you know the martyr they're the the messiah coming no. to save they, the industry they'll on the be iPhone losing side. money right now but it's not like it's they'll get it back they're, they'll get they're it back fine. um they still got they just announced their new season which is completely marvel themed this big yeah. marvel overarching story they got money they will yeah, be completely be fine and they'll make a lot of money at the end they'll of this they'll be perfectly fine but i'm very excited to see how this nets out uh back on the rumor train though you know from earlier this is a very big rumor mm -hmm. uh 
one that I fully support, if you ask me. Prince yes. of Persia remake reportedly in the works for 2020 release. Listings suggest PS4 and Switch versions as well as a November launch by Jordan Gerblick at Games Radar. A Prince of Persia remake has been spotted at an online retailer. Twitter user Ken Zyro was able to get a screenshot of two separate listings for Prince of Persia remake, one for Switch and another for PS4 on a Guatemalan retailer uh, on Guatemalan retailer Max. The listing suggests a November 2020 release. To note, both the PS5 and Xbox Series X are rumored to be launching mid-November. The listings have since been deleted, but reporter Jason Schreier has seemingly confirmed the information detailed therein. Mm -hmm. So you know he always gets insider scoops. So yeah. he tweeted, quote, video game retailers sure love leaking Ubisoft's surprise announcements. And then someone replied to him and said, I don't believe it. Mm -hmm. And he tweeted at that person, this tweet is not going to age well. Yeah. So... Uh, well, let me read the rest of it here. There's no telling exactly which Prince of Persia game is reportedly being remastered. It'd totally be, out of, totally be out of left field for Ubisoft to remake the original trilogy that kicked off in 89, but anything's possible. More likely, it's 2003's Prince of Persia, The Sands of Time, a soft reboot of the series, or judging from the logo in the listing, 2008's Prince of Persia. So yeah. I'm hoping for Sands of Time, personally. Yeah, I, I hope for Sands of Time as well. Super good game. Um, Played. Two thousand, I could see two thousand and eight Prince of Persia mm -hmm. coming. That's but Warrior I think, Within or something like that. I think I'd rather get Sands of Time oh, or even the old ones first. Hundred percent Sands of Time till I die. Um, but this is exciting. At, you know, at first Jason didn't. When I put this originally in the doc, Jason yeah. hadn't tweeted yet. So I was like, "Is this really worth talking about?" Because it's just some Guatemalan. It wouldn't be a week in gaming if there wasn't like some company putting up a listing for a game yeah. that hasn't been announced and yet. And then so. Jason coming on the back end and being like. Hey. It's hard to deny his yeah reputation. And honestly, and his... he's a little like he's kind of doing this the you know he's kind of doing the exact thing he's shitting on here. Yeah. By saying this, you know, like oh they love like cause like that, dude you you are as reputable as yeah. like Walmart because there was this stuff. There it's, was a lot of it's a Guatemalan retailer site. We don't know shit. And yeah. then he came in and then everyone was like, well never mind. We know. Yeah. All, he, you know? he actually confirmed it. So, yeah. Eh. Exciting to get uh, exciting news to get excited for. <laughs> Exciting news <laughs> to get to be excited for. <laughs> Just get, get, get excited. excited. Um, yeah, but if this is true, I, I love Prince of Persia: Sands of Time, and I would play the shit out of a remake of that. Yeah, we, you know, that'd be fun. Um, what's the Ubisoft did say they had more stuff to announce this month? So yeah, we'll they've see. been they've had a pretty good. We'll see. Pretty good announcement. Yep. But that's it for the news no. this week. Uh, decently large news week. Yeah. If good, there's an Nintendo Direct next week, that might be um, a larger news week next oh week. My God. I hope, I'm really bro. hoping it would make my week. Oh, 100. percent It'd make my year at this um, point. But you know, let us know what you think, and let's get on to the next section yeah. of the podcast. So, Michael Claire, this, this week in gaming. This week in gaming, um, starting with August 23rd, Sunday. Mm -hmm. Uh, you have Incredible Hulk Ultimate Destruction coming out in 2005. Is this a personal favorite of yours? You never played this game? I couldn't tell you if I did. Are you shitting me, dude? But uh, like you, uh, now, exactly, now okay, now I'm thinking. Right, I can imagine a box. It was either for. PS2 it was or for was PS2. the movie? No, it was for PS2. And it just says Hulk. I don't remember this Incredible Hulk okay. Ultimate Destruction. Man, thing. this game was awesome. Jumping, because you could jump like so fucking high. Is you this could, the Hulk game? Is yeah, there another uh, Hulk game? Yeah, pretty much this is the Hulk game. Okay, then I probably could, played it. You could jump like a thousand feet in the air yeah. and like crush cars and it was so awesome, dude. I loved that fucking game. I think I remember that game a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, I loved it. Then in two, then wow, my voice Ooh, cracked. Ooh, little boy. Reverse puberty. <laughs> two thousand ten, you get Mafia two. I love that game. Never played Mafia two. Played Mafia three. Mm -hmm. Will play Mafia two with the trilogy when it releases yeah. though. Probably. Mafia two is a really good game. I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, then in two thousand eleven, you have Deus Ex: Human Revolution, and then followed up by five years later in twenty sixteen, Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Both very very good games. Do you think they did that on purpose? One hundred percent, right? Uh, five I, years later, I think. They didn't do it on purpose, but then they seen that it could line up well, and there was like, oh, marketing beat. Yeah. Let's throw it on there. So, yeah, Deus Ex, both very good games. Uh, them. They're Yeah, they're really good. They're known for being, you know, the, quote, classic word you hear in all video games, immersive. Yeah. Um, they're, they're really known for, for having, like, a rich Tapping world. Tapping into like that immersive a, a, world. Like a, a small world, but very filled to the brim with stuff to do. Yeah. So. Uh, coming up on your next day, August 24th, you get Beautiful Joe, 2004. Does that do nothing for you, bro? Nothing for me. Are you shitting me? I couldn't tell you what game that is. What? Jordan. Jordan, do you know what Beautiful Joe bring is? Some, bring up Beautiful Joe right now. Game oh, Cube game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I thought it came out on PS2 as well. Okay, uh, okay, okay. So I played Hulk on PS2. Okay, yeah. Is this not the game you were thinking of then? 
Huh? Is, is that a different game? It than must be a different game. Okay. Bring a Beautiful Joe right now. Beautiful Joe, I do not think I've heard of. Bring that shit up right what now. What was this on? Beautiful Joe came out on the GameCube, dude. Are you shitting me? I'm I'm not sure. Uh, are you kidding me? Uh, we can talk no, about no, a better. No, we're not continuing. We well, are not no, continuing. He's pulling it up. I'm going to talk about beautiful Metroid Joe. I'm going to continue. No, hold Trilogy up. Don't even keep talking. Stop talking. Stop talking. Bring a beautiful Joe right now. What is this? Okay, this art style looks very familiar. Show it to the people. Just drag it in your other window. Show the, it to the people. Oh, okay. I could have never told you that this guy was beautiful Joe. Are you going to show it to the people? Are you going to? Yeah. Were you? You weren't showing it to the people. Now we can't see you. Man, <laughs> what have you done? We're we're here. Okay, now there's a lot. Okay, now they see things. Oh, oh, yep. Hold up. There's a lot going on. Just full screen that. Don't technical. There we go. Okay. There you go. Okay. So yeah, you click like that one with the yellow and the orange in the middle. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's a good one. This looks extremely familiar. I didn't play it though. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Look at that, dude. Beautiful Joe. No. Classic 2D it's game. It's not doing anything for me. It inspired. What's that game? Hero. 108 oh hero. wonderful hero or 101 wonderful something. 101 heroes or something like yeah, that yeah that's the game that, that just came to the switch a disney xd sure. show i'm not maybe sure. but I beautiful it. joe is a classic dude I, dude if they bring this to switch oh I swear to god dude i'll play it so swear fast to god. swear to god i swear to god dude i love beautiful joe i can't believe you read that with no reaction i'm sorry wow metroid prime wow. trilogy as a Nintendo, are you Nintendo fanboy number one? Do I got to change your tagline when we when I intro you? Yes. Okay, I'm changing. After it. the Pikachu incident, I can't. I I'm can't come but back yeah, anymore. 2009 Metro Prime Trilogy. Good. Bring Everyone that shit knows to it. the Switch, bro. I know what you know it. We all know it. It's a good game. Bring it to the Switch. August 25th, 1997. Maybe a better game. Maybe a trash game. Goldeneye. 007. Did you say maybe a trash game? <sighs> Have you tried to replay this game recently? Whoa, that's not what we talk about. I've played this game like <laughs> we're not last about, year. We're not talking about replaying it. We're this talking about what it was like back in the good. day. Big head mode, bro. 007. Dude, you know how many old This game was a classic. Listen. I'm not denying it. All the people, most of the people that personally talk to me about the pos podcast uh -huh. are 35 plus. You were pissing them off so much by saying 007 is a shitty game. I'm not saying it's a trash game. I'm you, just saying you, it's a... Trash game now. <laughs> oh, no, dude. Wow. Very good game. Classic. I would rather play almost any game on this list before I hit 007 again. Wow. I'd rather play Hulk. In the show. Dude. <laughs> the podcast is over. The game... It, Take it all play back. multiplayer 007, the first person to get a rocket launcher just wins. I should have kept the receipts. <laughs> it, I mean... On to the next game. Dude, Super Mario play. Sunshine 2002. Classic. Way better game. Super hot take that I hold is that Super Mario Sunshine is my favorite 3D Mario game. That's a terrible take. But, hey. You can't talk trash on me after that. Well, actually, no. It's not my favorite. Hold up. Mario Galaxy's are. Yeah, okay. There you no, go. I, no, the hot take is that I hold it over Mario 64. I think Super Mario Sunshine is better than Mario 64. Hmm. So, my apologies. You're allowed to talk trash on a 64 game, but I'm not. Whoa. Yeah, I'm not. I'm no. I didn't talk trash on it. I said I think Sunshine is better. I didn't say hey, this game's trash. Are you saying, do you think 64 is the worst? Yes. All right. You I didn't say it was trash. You said it. I didn't say it was trash. You though. said it's the worst. Are you kidding me right now? You bro? just said it's the worst, bro. Super what? Monkey Ball 2, 2002. <laughs> Same day as Sunshine. Yep. Same day as Sunshine. Were these both? Yeah. Day one releases. Is that what it is? Uh, I'm not sure about that, but okay. it did come out on the GameCube. Super Monkey Ball 2. Classic. Fun game. Probably much better than Super Monkey Ball Banana Blitz for the Nintendo Switch. Oh, easily better. <laughs> uh, undeniable. Uh, six years later on the same console, Mario Super Sluggers. Yep. Man, Iconic. GameCube had a lifetime. Iconic. Uh, 2009, Batman Arkham Asylum. You know, that's topical. Very good Super game. good game if you haven't played it, man. One of my favorites. Those Riddler trophies and shit. So fun to get. Is, it, is that the one with Poison Ivy and... Yeah. and yes. Scare? Yeah. Yeah, yep. nice as Very hell. Very good game. Nice as hell. Um, and then 2015, you get Until Dawn, the movie, the game. Yep, the movie. It really is the movie, the game. Yeah. Um, it has, who is it? Rami Malik. Yep. Good game. It is a very good game. I enjoyed it. Uh, the next day, August 26th, Infamous First Light, 2014. Uh, Shout Yep, the standalone game. This is like the Miles Morales, Lost Legacy style yep. of game. A very, a very good game. It was free for PS Plus users. That's why I played it. But yeah. I honestly kind of liked it more than... Metroid Second Son, but that's because I like I like the neon powers the most. Okay. It, that game was 100% 100%. neon power. Interesting take. Yeah. August 27th, you get the original Mafia in 2002. Yeah, never played that either, but I will play it on this crazy yeah, remake. I'll, re I'll replay it. 2008, you get Castle Crashers. That game came out in 2008. Yeah, that's an iconic summer that doesn't make summer sense. of arcade Xbox 360 yeah. game. Oh man, Castle Crashers. Castle Crashers is a great game. Banging. Uh, 2019, you get Control. Yeah. Uh, the only reason people, a lot of people enjoy that game last year. Yeah, the only reason I put it in here, I, I didn't want to put, I don't like to put two newer, like if it's like a year ago, mm -hmm. but I put that one in here because 
it kind of blew my mind that it's already been a year since Control. Yeah, I guess and, it. But also, I really liked Control. So. Yeah, good game. August twenty eighth, two thousand. Mario Tennis. Yep. Um, iconic. Not as good. Hey, not as good as Sega Superstars Tennis. Let's, let's don't get it twisted, okay? Sega Su- Superstars Tennis. That game smacked. I and think. I I'll think put, I agree. If they put that on the Switch, I oh, think I agree. Dude, just put everything on the Switch. Honestly, pets. Just the pets initiative. Get maybe. rid of the Xbox. The pets initiative. Get rid of the put the PlayStation. We don't Switch. need them anymore. Put it on Switch. Uh, on August 29th Mario Superstar Baseball in 2005. See, I never even heard of this one, but I included didn't it. Didn't know. Anything. I thought. I thought what's if the, you weren't playing Sluggers, what yeah, were you doing? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like I didn't even know. 2006 Saints Row, the original. That, yeah, that game came out two years before Mario Super Sluggers. Yeah. My my concept of time is it's gone. all fucked. Yeah, it but doesn't also exist anymore. also. What an evolution! Yes, from Saints Row One to Saints, Saints Row, Row 4. One. You could look at it and maybe think it could be related to Saints Row, Row Four. Yeah, but no, nah. not at all, <laughs> not man. At all, man. Uh, and then 2017, uh, sleeper hit in my opinion, Mario Rabbits Kingdom Battle. Yeah, easy to turn away from that game simply because it has rabbits in the title. Yeah, but, but really came out and blew everyone's minds. Also, it's been three fucking years. Yeah, like what the it, hell? Yeah, that game's old. Jesus. I enjoyed that game a lot. This and blows then, my mind. But that's, that's the it. end of this that's, week in gaming. Uh, a fun week. Good week. Iconic week. Some hot takes in there. Yeah. Like 007 being trash. Like 64 being the worst. I'm the host. <laughs> I'll leave. <laughs> you can do this show. Um, on to the next uh, section. You got a character in mind? Do I? Do we yeah. got time? Yeah, we got time. We've only been going oh, for... Oh, boy. We've only been going for... I'm not going to lie. I was looking around and my first thought was to just pick the Monopoly man. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if that will count. No, nah, that's whack. You got a and character then, for me? This is I'll AK. tell you. I'm just telling you what my next yep. thought was: was to do the T piece from Tetris. Yeah. But I think that's cheating. Yeah, that's kind of whack as well. If you don't know what this is, the Akinator. This is the section of the podcast where we, one of us, come up with a character in our head, a video game character that mm-hmm. we try to see if the other character, other p- character, Jesus, the other person can guess, and then we race an AI. The quote Akinator yep. to see if we can beat him in guessing the video game character so do you, do you have one in I head? do have one okay um Boy. is this character featured in any of the games listed in this week in gaming um that's a good question I'm gonna say no no so, I'm, I'm pretty certain no but let me let me double take the list yeah it's a pretty certain no pretty certain no you didn't even look at the list that hard. I well, I mean, there's no way it's like a hidden character in Castle Crashers, so you're good. Okay, 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 okay. All right, move on. That's one Next question. question. Okay, hmm. have I played the game that this character is featured in? Yes, one of them. One of them. Okay. Mm. Okay. 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 Got a gnat on me. Um, damn, dude, I'm hungry. That's completely unrelated, but I just had to say that. That's a clue, actually. <laughs> Is it? No. Okay. What do you... Oh, what do you... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, Let me think here. Uh, Shoot. Is this character... Would this character be considered a main character? Um... Is it... No. Sh- okay. I was going to reword it, but okay. You can uh, you can reword it. I was going to say way. a playable character. No. Okay, okay. Let's go with that. Is this char- character considered a villain? Or like... No. On the bad team? No. no. Okay. Um, is this character shit? Yeah, is that your question? <laughs> is this character shit? Um, um that's a very no uh, opinionated an- question. An let answer. me think, man. Like you, you really rack your brain in this. Like it really hits you hard. Would I do Pikachu? No way, dude. Would I pick the same character you picked last week? You know how whack that is, bro. You'll get canceled. They'll cancel us. I've already been canceled, bro. Metroid, uh, Metroid, Metroid. No, don't look around. It's not gonna help. Yeah, no, I know. That's a clue, though. Or not? Or am I or getting red herringed? Um. Okay. <laughs> so I'm four questions in. I don't four know questions. shit. I don't know nothing. Is this character featured on the Switch? What is featured mean? Like, like the, are they the in Switch. a game that's on yes. the Nintendo Switch? Yeah, okay. they're on the Switch. Okay. Is the game? Is it a current gen game? Like, it's not a port. Yeah, current gen. So it's not a port? Not not a port, no. Okay, 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 okay. You're a side character. Dude, I don't know fucking shit. But you said I've played this game. When did I say that? Whoa, you said that. Did I? Yeah, you said I played this game. One oh, of them. Oh, yeah. You said one oh, of them. Oh, yeah, you played one of them. Okay, yeah. What the fuck? I wasn't that? about to get him a, give him a freebie. <laughs> did not. 
in this man like they're not on this list so this is a good list here not in any well, of yeah these. you know it's not super is it a ball nintendo too. character yes it is a nintendo see that's a good question you should just automatically ask yeah. bro like are you kidding I, that's always like one of my first ones and they're not a, they're not considered a villain or on the bad side no they're not okay. so you had seven and you know it's a nintendo character yeah on the switch you played it not a bad guy okay, not, not the a, main character not a playable character are they in the Mario franchise? No, stop. I'm not asking that. I'm not asking that shit. Why wouldn't you? Because there's Mario games on this, bro, and they would probably be in it. I think. Possibly. Would they? Okay. All right, is this character in a game you played recently? Um, Define recently. Well, the last month? Uh, no. Okay. Shit. <laughs> I was really hoping for a yes there. You know, sometimes you got nothing. Eight. Sometimes you, sometimes you take a route. Sometimes the the answer really be Pikachu, but you just can't get to it. It's not Pikachu, dude. Are you kidding me? I'll be so. Have pissed. I played Pokemon in the last month? Pokemon Go. No. Hmm. That's not on the Switch either. Yeah, that's correct. Dude, no way, dude. I don't, <laughs> I don't trust you. I'll give you a hint. It's not Pikachu. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Let me just clear your mind right now. Because you really have me tripping. Okay, it's a Nintendo franchise. It can't be from Metroid. Can't be. Is this from Zelda series? No. Shit. Nine. Is this from producers holding up nine fingers? I think you're on. Is question. this character on the Smash? No. Not asking that. Not asking that. Is this character on the Smash roster? No. God, that's eighty. That's like eighty characters. That's not a playable character. Yeah, but it could be on there. You know. But if it's a okay, would that? No. When I said it's not a playable character, if it was on the Smash roster, wouldn't that make it a playable character? Think about that. Yeah. Damn. I wasn't thinking that deep. I wasn't either until you asked the question. <laughs> I wasn't thinking that deep. But no, it's not on the Smash roster. Okay. What is that, 10? Yeah. Yeah, producer says 10. So it's not on Splatoon, maybe. But I didn't play that. I didn't play that, really. I played a little bit of it, but... Hmm. Think deep. I'm thinking real deep. This character. Yeah. It's a character. I, I don't even fucking have any remote clue of like what it could be. Okay, so it's not Zelda. It's not Mario, obviously. Mm -hmm. It's not Pikachu. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's not Barrett Wallace because I got him last week. Um, Barrett Wallace. Is, well, I can see he is on the Switch. Yeah, he is on the Switch. Wait. Yeah, he is yeah, on he the is. Switch. He's on the Switch. Like... Why am I ready to give up? Like Hot I seat, bro. Like, I shouldn't be ready to give up right now. You're really trying to make this podcast an hour and a half? Like, why should? Why am I... Is this character... So, it's a Nintendo franchise? They're in a, yeah. I, yeah, I already yep. asked that. Yep. I already asked that. So, is it... They're in Take a shots. Kirby game? Nope. Arms? No. Hmm. Happens to the best of us. So not Kirby, not Arms, not Splatoon, not Metroid, not Zelda, not Mario. It always sucks to be in the other chair. I don't know. I killed it that one week, bro. Don't yeah. You know, I killed it. You did. Oops, didn't mean to bump the mic. I'm sorry. Um, damn. Twelve questions in, and I don't know a damn. Do thing. we need game show music for this portion? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't want to get claimed. Don't do it. <laughs> okay. Um. 12 questions in, and I don't know a goddamn thing. Um, For what? For Pikachu? Oh, he was at like 18. No way. It was like 16, maybe. Something like that, yeah. Too many. Fuck. Like 10 What are the many. Mario franchises? Is this character's franchise? What are the Mario franchises? Represent no, Nintendo as well, man. Is this character's franchise represented on the Smash roster? Yes. Okay. Is it an Earthbound character? No, because I never played that. Running it back. I'm just going to keep Run looking deep into the soul of whoever's watching this podcast. Help me. Um, <laughs> send help, please. Send help, please. <laughs> Kylie Arter. Now you got to fix the, do, 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 fix the camera. Do, do. Fix nah, it. Uh, what? Someone moved it. Spin it. Spin it. Reach forward. Spin it. Oh, no. Reach forward and spin it. Kylie, you did it. We got to pause the whole podcast for this. Come on, reach forward. Okay, don't get it in front happened. of the camera. It'll mess up the. It'll mess up the. So reach I forward. Made my mistake. Tilt the camera. Nope, nope. nope. Spin it, not tilt. Spin, spin. You did say tilt. No, spin, spin like like this, like this way. 
At this point, why don't you just get up? Kylie, please. Never mind, Kylie. I got it. I got it. You're, 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 you're no, yeah, okay. Is this, is this just where the end again? Every time, bro. Man, we were so close. Bro. We was killing the game this pod. You know, you thought there'd be no chaos. Hey, way, way less chaos this time around now. Okay? Yeah. So, first and foremost. Second. How do we want to cut back in? So, I'm 12 questions in. Then we're not cutting. That was so small. We're it. cutting. No, that was so small. Of a I'm going to have to hear it from Trey. Nah, fuck Trey. I'm just kidding. I love Trey. <clears throat> <laughs> just cl- cut it and then. No. Cut it. No. Let that play and Hold then up. cut after. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Akinator, what is him? Okay, he's not Kirby. He's not. And you said their franchise was represented on the Smash roster. I did. Is this character from Pokemon? No. Fuck. Is this character? Mm-hmm. Fourteen. Is this character? Is this character? Is this character? Is character? <sighs> yes. We're trying to think of all the franchises on the Smash roster. It's always where we get stumped. The Smash good, roster? I wonder what percent of the podcast is us talking about this. All podcasts is just somebody thinking about the Smash roster. Yeah. It's got to be at least 5%. Okay, Smash roster. Not maybe not 5 Smash two. roster. Okay. Someone do the math. Trey. Do you consider Donkey, Donkey Kong franchise? Is Mario franchise. Okay, yeah. We've, we've, yeah, tied, we've, we've established this. this. Okay. Um, My name. Who am I? Who am I? <laughs> I'm just... So... It's for a different podcast. Yeah, I know. Uh, uh, nothing. There's literally nothing in here. You're gonna give, bro? Come on. There's literally nothing in my head. Like, like, I, in my head, like a phone a friend for a question, dude. In my head, I have thought of every single like. There's, I've, you've asked, not. I've asked every single Smash franchise, but I know you I have not. I know I have not. There's at least like thirty. You, so, you could phone a friend. So. Uh, I'm just gonna start naming shit. Splatoon? No, fifteen. Okay. I uh, already asked Arms. Is this is there is this is this character's franchise on the DLC portion of the game? No. On the Smash. Okay. Main roster. Main roster. That's sixteen. So we got yep. char- characters. Okay. Bro, you're gonna get screwed. Is by this character? Finger. No, it's not playable. I was gonna ask if it was Game Watch, but it's not Game Watch because you can't play that. Yeah, you're not on the Smash. You Club. just have to figure out what franchise they're from. Is this from the Pikmin franchise? No. Seventeen. Is this from Street Fighter? That's not a Nintendo franchise. Oh yeah, they, never mind. I'll don't you don't mark that back. down. Don't mark that down. What a fool! What a fool! Dude, that's all the Nintendo franchises. It's not, bro. bro. You're missing a big one. I'm missing a big one. Yep. It's funny. Cause I feel I've like been you when you couldn't think of Pikachu. Spot. Yeah. When you couldn't I've think been of Pikachu. I've been in this exact spot. All the shit I times. talked. All the shit I talked. Yeah, I give up, dude. I got nothing. You, yeah. you want to phone a friend? Does. Okay. Do you want to y'all have a question for Tim? Okay. Is it a. Uh, is it a Fire Emblem character? Wrong, wrong question. What's your question? Uh, he asked if it was a Fire Emblem character. I'm not going to make that one count. Tim hasn't played it. I haven't played it. No. Well, I played Fire Emblem Awakening. I thought it was very bad. Producer. How is everybody forgetting this franchise? No. No, he already asked Zelda. All right. right, I'm going to throw you a bone here. Animal Crossing. Oh, fuck. I've been in the the exact (sighs) position. God. You just can't think of Animal Crossing. Dang it. I know you didn't, but he did. I forget about Vinny. So that would be 19. There's so many Animal Crossing characters. Um, do you interact with this? You know, is this character featured in resident services? Featured in resident Are services? Are they in resident services? No. Is this character an owl? Yes. It, well, I can't remember his name. You got the owl's name, bro? What's his name? She's giving you a hint. I know, but I can't think of his name. She's saying Hoot Hoot. I know it's Hoot. His name's not Hoot Hoot. I know it's the owl, but I don't know what his name is. He's even in the shot. It's not Eugene, is it? Is it Eugene? Is it Eugene? Isn't there someone named Eugene? No. That's like the deer or some shit. Stare at him. Look at him. He's in the shot. Yeah, he's right. He's literally right here, but like... Look into him. What's his name? Blathers, thank you. There you go. (laughs) How many was that? 20? 21? 
Okay. All right. Bring up Aconator. Let's run them through. Humbling experience, isn't it? <clears throat> hey, look, I killed the game. All right. Uh, one podcast. Okay. So I've done that. All right, you you have one. You before. haven't done that. You haven't done that. So let's let's play. Let's see if you can beat Aconator. Aconator, I need you to suck ass. I'm expecting one day for him to just get it completely wrong. Yeah. And I know. just go 30 questions. I would like that a lot, personally. Um, is your character gender female? Nope. No. Not female. He's definitely a dude. Is your does, does your character really exist? No. Yeah, I'd put no. Does your nope. character have human skin? No, no human skin. That's gross. Is your character an animal? Ah, shit. You're screwed. Oh, he's stumped. Oh, he's loading. It's loading. He's stumped, bro. Is your character originally from a video game? Yes. Oh, yeah. You're donezo, dude. Fuck. You're donezo. Does your character have robotic parts? Not that I, not no. That I know. No of. robotic no. parts. Man's is 100% all. Not linked with Sonic the Hedgehog. Not Sonic. Nope. Not at all. Cat? No. No, not a cat. Definitely not a cat. Come on, Akinator. Does your character wear clothes? Yes, right? Mm. He's got he's got like a he has a bow tie, on. but I don't know. Is it just a bow tie? It's just a bow tie. I'd put I'd put don't know. Or probably. Yeah, put probably. Yeah, because all of them wear clothes. Literally yeah. all of them wear clothes. He just has a bow tie right here, but Is your character linked with Undertale? No. No, not linked with Undertale. Bro, no. Your character linked with Nintendo, yes. Oh, yeah, now I'm really fucked. Yeah, 100%. Oh, come, on. come on. Reel it in. Oh, Animal Crossing, yes, yeah. From Animal Crossing, no. Is it, he a biologist? And yeah, he is, right? Is he? He's a biologist. Who else would be a biologist yeah, in Animal Crossing? Yeah, because he, he gets the stuff. Yeah, he's definitely a biologist. Nope. Oh, no. Not a dog. Maybe not a dog. he wasn't a biologist. Is he some kind of bird? Yes. Yeah. Is your character typically indoors? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's in the museum. Is he an owl? Yes. Yep. He's asking too many questions. Come on, reel it in. Is he associated with comedy? No. Oh, no. What's happening? Akinator, please. Akinator, yes. Oh, there ah! we go. What, what was the comedy? Is there an owl character in Animal Crossing? I'm trying to think if there's an owl character in any game that's associated with comedy. I don't know. But 19 questions. Yep, and I did it in 21. Hey, bro, that's not that bad of a spread. <laughs> um, until I... Gave hey, it to you. dude, it's not that bad of a spread, okay? Not that, not that bad of a spread. Um, Only well, lost by That was two. fun, to, even though I sat there for a while. Just. Do you think it's as painstaking for the viewer? Yeah. They're so? watching me suck ass, and they're probably screaming into their phones like, dude, it's, it's Animal, Animal Crossing. Crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, okay. So mm -hmm. on to the What You've Been Playing section of the podcast. This is the section of the podcast where we tell you what we've been playing. Let's go quick. So, um, speed I've, run. Yep, speed run on this because we've been going quite a while. Um, I played Mortal Shell, the Dark Souls like. It's a very competent Souls like. Uh, it's very the combat is very fun. It has an interesting mechanic uh, that differentiates it from Dark Souls. The mechanic called Harden, where you can completely turn your body to stone and negate an attack. Makes the game easy mode makes for a game, second. Yep, makes it a little bit easy. Um, but uh, to a little negative on it is the map layouts make no fucking sense. Very Sometimes confusing. I'm very lost. Obviously, we played a short hike. Yep. Yeah, we both played Darksiders that. Genesis. It's an ARPG action role playing game in this, the, the line of uh, Diablo mm -hmm. without any of the loot, which makes it worse if you ask me. And it wasn't very engaging. I only played it for an hour and I uninstalled it. Played Lego Harry Potter. Obviously, it's a classic. It doesn't really keep me engaged, though. Those games mm -hmm. do have a hard time keeping me engaged nowadays. So yeah, can't really get into it. Played Spirit Fair. Talk played that it. damn game. Been playing a lot of Divinity. Actually, went straight from Divinity to this podcast, uh, Original Sin 2. Super deep and complex uh, RPG. I'm having a lot of fun with it playing with your boy Jordan over there. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but it might just be because I'm playing couch co-op that's carrying it. I don't know if I play it as much if I was playing yeah. single player, but I don't know. It's it's very deep. The amount of choice and the amount of like crazy, like the amount of interactions in the game kind of blow mm -hmm. my mind. Like everything interacts with something and it's kind of like, wow, like you do a thing yeah. and you're like, of course, that makes sense. And like this would impact this. Yeah, and, and normal yeah. and normally in video games, like they don't think of that stuff. But mm -hmm. in this one, they thought of all the things. So very fun. I might I might have to watch I'll play a little bit of it. Um, of course, I finished Yoshi's Crafter World. I don't think I finished it before the last podcast. Mm -hmm. Um it's very easy. It's like that game's made for kids or something. I <laughs> demolished it. <laughs> Ran through it no problem. Didn't die once. Um talked about short hike a little bit. That game's fun. Very enjoyed fun. it. So good. Um Civ Six, I played one run through as cleopatra Sounds one good one one with science really one with money i, yeah. I was getting like 500 gold gold a turn yeah. before bc or yeah. like you know back in bc i was what making were you playing on easy easy no i was playing on prince oh, which okay. is like medium i guess that's easy yeah probably but like i was just i was making money yeah um and then i play i've been getting back into mtg arena 
just because yeah i seen you on the i seen you on my computer over there because i've Deep i've been issues. i've been i've watched a mtg arena streamer mm-hmm. like non-stop like he's yeah. he streams in the morning he's my favorite morning streamer and i've been watching him for over a year now mm-hmm. even when i wasn't playing mtg yeah like just got you back in yeah i don't know why i yeah. eventually was like that i just want to play that yeah. deck. these things happen and so now i'm stuck trying to grind wild cards so i can just actually build a good deck because mm-hmm. our old we we built um aggro decks yeah and they're good for like grinding the best real kind quick, of deck if you ask me but they're not that fun every game's kind of the same just play my mana burn spell or play a creature and then pass no no like interesting engagement in no, it really but i've been playing this deck where it, <laughs> there's a sacrifice mechanic it's not it's not cat oven mm-hmm. which is just a non-stop cycle of yep. garbage infinite they finally banned the cat Did so, they? Okay, yeah. okay okay um but i'm playing a very interesting deck where you have to make big choices and big brain plays and i'm mm-hmm. enjoying it a lot i'll have to call you over there one time i want to play okay but arena fun Classic. if you like card games very good way to play magic for mm-hmm. free um i think that's it that's all i've played that's it okay that's the show for the week Thank you so much. This was a bit of a long one, but thank you so much for listening or watching this Hopefully, episode. Hopefully uh, an improvement from last week. Yep. Uh, this can episode, only go uphill. Yeah, 100% of the Synced Up Podcast. Uh, once again, the new episodes go up every Monday at 7 a.m. Central Time Zone, gang. That's true. You can email us at synceduppod at gmail.com if you want to send anything into the show. Um, and sorry, that just had me shook, those lower thirds. Um, that, uh, that's correct. Yeah, those are our Twitters on there. Those are our names. Timothy DeRo and at... Uh, the coast is clear on mm-hmm. uh, Twitter. Also at Synced Up Pod on Twitter. Um, review, rate the show on your favorite podcasting service. Give us a like. Hit us with a sub. Post notifications. The whole damn thing, you know, that all the classic stuff you get yeah. when uh, people tell you to do these things. But it does help a lot. And we, we've been doing pretty good. And hopefully this episode wasn't as crazy bad as the last one. Not bad. Actually, chaos. Chaotic. Less wasn't chaotic. Yeah. Even though sure. I thought the chaos was fun. There was a lot of shit going on. But... This week, a lot better, obviously. We worked out a couple kinks. The camera didn't die. Jordan did better behind the, the scenes there. Tetris was on the whole time. Tetris was on the whole time. The marquee was on. Yeah, marquee Period. is blue. Um, yeah, so everything worked a lot better. Thank you so much for listening and watching this episode of the Sync Up Podcast. Shout out, Mike, for being here. Shout out to your boy, Jordan, for doing the sound stuff. Shout out and, to our producer. And shout out to our producer, Kylie, for bumping the camera. I'm just kidding, Kylie. Good shit. She's gone. She's gone. Okay, she's not even here. All right, we'll listen. No. Shit. You know, we'll you try. Listen. We'll try so hard. We'll talk to we you. Have to record we'll see you. The whole thing. We'll do the podcast next week. Goodbye. Have you read through all, all these articles mm-hmm. that you put in? Okay. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say because that might help you from tripping up on any words or. <laughs> Damn, bro. It wasn't an insult. It was just like I was trying to think of more things that Trey said. I'm fucking hurt. Dude. What? It wasn't an insult. He said, hey, did you read these beforehand? Because that might keep you from fucking up when you <laughs> read it during the podcast. Isn't it true, though? <laughs> yeah. But... Isn't that a normal thing that people oh, who geez, read some crisp-ass paper? Put yeah. Put but remember, you can't hold it like that high. Yeah. Also...